Okay. So hopefully this will be uh, short and sweet. Uh, if not, it'll be at least one of those two things. Uh, so what I'm going to show you here is how to create some dial charts. Uh, has anybody played with the new SVG uh, image options in Power BI, where you can have measures that generate SVG, uh, and therefore like you can essentially create charts inside of a table? Does it's everybody know what SVG is? SVG, thank you, Ron. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic, uh, and it's a way of storing an image that's non-rasterized, which means it's not pixel-based. It's a bunch of vectors and shapes, and so it means that the actual size of the SVG file and the code is very small and it's human-readable, right? So uh, let's pop over and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Over here. So this is sort of what the solution looks like, right? And so what we've got is we've got, uh, for each one of these store locations, uh, we've got a city and you know what's data in the country and all that good stuff. We've got the total sales and the total goal. And what we've got is we've got this chart here that's actually an SVG uh, image. And so we're using a measure to generate this text right here. And since we've tagged it as an image, we're able to have these essentially sort of spark lines or spark charts inside of our table, which uh, up till now was impossible to do in Power BI or was at the very least very, very clunky to do. So this gives us sort of a lot of uh, flexibility and functionality in that we could have this table and have individual charts on a row by row basis, which is pretty darn cool. And so what we've got, I guess I'm supposed to stay here where the camera is, hold on. Uh, so for each one of these things, we have this dial, right? And the dial starts down here at the bottom. And if you reach your goal, it goes all the way up to the very top at noon, like 12 o'clock. And if you go uh, up to 200% past your goal, it'll wrap all the way around. So the idea is you can look at all these individual dials and very, very quickly see, hey, have I met my goal? Am I way below? Am I very close to it? Or am I way over it, right? We've also got a little indicator at the top of this thing. It turns red if you have not yet met your goal. This is a way of sort of conveying a lot of information in a very small amount of space, okay? So does everybody understand like sort of the value of this thing? Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to create it the easy way, which is to say you're gonna have me do almost all of the work for you, okay? So uh, let's say that we've got a table that looks like this, and we wanna add that to it. So what you do, we'll provide this text file. You open up your chart. I call these uh, 11 charts. Does anybody know why I call them 11 charts? No, why? Because it goes to 11. It goes to 11, thank you. I was worried somebody wasn't gonna get that. The chart goes to 11. I, I can't do an English accent tonight, unfortunately, I'm sorry. So, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna twirl open our uh, panes over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new measure. I'm gonna right click and do new measure. <clears throat> you want to tell everybody what it was from, for anybody that didn't get it? Yeah. Final tap. Final tap, okay. Or the folks who just didn't think it was fine. I know, I yeah. Like thinking, okay, am I going to go fast? You know, her, her parents kept her locked away <laughs> in the for, you know, most of her uh, youth, and so she did, she missed a lot. <laughs> so, all you got to do is take all this stuff, don't read it, just copy it, head back over to Power BI, and for your uh, measure, just paste that text in there, right? And then up at the tip top, there's a bunch of stuff you don't touch. Up here is the stuff you actually touch, right? And so right here, let me, can I zoom in? Hey, it's still available, okay. So the only two variables you really have to change are the actual amount and the goal amount, right? So right now I've got these hard-coded to 100 and 150. What I'm gonna do is, uh, actually I'll just leave them as is for right now, just so you can see how it behaves a little differently. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna take my 11 measure, and I'm gonna just drag it here into the table, and you'll get this mess right here, because I haven't told it yet that this is supposed to be an image. So what you'll get is the text that that DAX code is generating, which is all this gobbledygook right here. To turn that into an image, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is click on the measure, make sure it's selected. Then we head over to modeling, and in modeling here under data category, we swap this over to image URL. And boom, just like that, it works, right? Now, there is sort of a little bug that I think is actually a bug. Oh, I'm gonna stay over here. Is an actual bug. Uh, we're in for the totals. For whatever reason, it can't seem to parse that. So uh, what I've done just to make my life easy is I just go and turn off totals for the chart. Works just fine. There's more advanced ways to do it, but that's a pretty easy way to do it. Okay, so now it's working, except if you look at it, uh, obviously the numbers aren't very interesting. We're always at about you know 75% of the way there. That's because we hard-coded those values in. So to change it, pop over to our 11 measure, right? And we say, all right, instead of the total amount being 100, or my actual value, 
I'm just gonna turn that into total sales or whatever measure your actual measure is. Then for your goal measure, instead of being hard coded at 150, we're just gonna have the uh, total goal, right? And now I click on it and it's working perfectly. It's easy as that. And it's very dynamic too. So like if I, twirl this guy close a little bit. If I go from quarter one to quarter two, it's redrawing those images on the fly very, very fast. It's a very nice way to encode a lot of information in a small amount of space, okay? I could also, if I want to, uh, here in the code, if I was really feeling it, I could change the, uh, the little triangle at the top. If I wanted the color to now be red and gray, I could change the below goal hexadecimal code and the met goal hexadecimal code if I wanted to. I'd probably just leave those as is, but if you want to, you can change them, okay? As long as I've got a minute, I'll just walk through the very basics of how this code works, okay? So what it does is, is we start with this base text right here. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And what I've got up here is my basic SVG code. And it starts here by saying, hey, uh, this is gonna be an SVG image. It's got this canvas, which is to say it's got this much space to work with. It's got a width of 100 pixels, a height of 100 pixels some metadata about you know what version of SVG we're working with, what the background color is. And then what I've got is I've got these polylines, which is just to say a polygon, right? And here, uh, where it says, hey, what are the different uh, points for that polygon? What are the points that it should lie? What creates the shape? Rather than hard coding the values in there, what I've got is this hashtag goal, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, uh, a, a DAX variable, a bit of DAX code to generate all my individual points to say my X and Y coordinates. And I'm gonna replace that hashtag goal with my X and Y coordinates, okay? And when I do, when it draws it, it won't say hashtag goal, it'll say the actual X and Y values, okay? So uh, generally what I do is uh, I start by saying, all right, what's my goal fill? And I, I check to see if my actual amount is greater than my goal amount. If it is, I use the uh, achieved color. If it isn't, I use the did not achieve color that we set before. And then I say, okay, what's the percentage to goal uh, base number? Which is to say how far around the circle should it have gone? Knowing that if it actually hit the goal dead on, it should go halfway around the circle, right? And so what I do is I divide my actual amount by my goal amount. And I just multiply that by 0.5, because if I didn't multiply it by 0.5, met the goal would be 100% of the way around the circle. I want it to be halfway around the circle, okay? Uh, then I do this little bit here to say, hey, by the way, if it's less than zero, make the value zero. And by the way, if it's greater than 200% around, the chart only goes 200% all the way around, so cap it at 200, right? And then I get to use trigonometry, which is the really fun part of this thing. So if you're ever in a trigonometry class and you, you ask yourself, when am I ever gonna use it? Today is the day, right? No way. <laughs> You're lying. I know, right? So what we do is we generate a series. We use this DAX code here to generate series. So we're generating a table of numbers that goes from zero to whatever my uh, percent to goal is, and it goes in uh, zero, like two percent increments. So it tells you, you know, how far around the circle should this thing go? And then what I do is I use this concatenate X to say, all right, for each one of those points around the circle, for each percentage around the circle. I want you to say, um, go take the sine of that and the cosine of that and sort of just round it down to an integer. And what that'll do is it'll tell me, you know, what the X and Y coordinates would be on like a unit circle. Then I multiply it by the radius to sort of stretch it out to find the actual X and Y coordinates for each one of these guys. And it just builds that code for me, right? Did you, did you like wake up in the middle of the night, Brian, and, and this came to you in a dream and you said, oh, quick, I have to write this down? Uh, I basically spent a oh, Everything from Brian comes out of the hat. That's right, yeah. All the secrets are down here. Don't look. Um, or did you find it on the web? No, I did not find it on the web. I will say uh, that much at least. You completely made it up. I, I completely mean, made this completely up. completely made that up. So generate series is one of my favorite DAX functions. I try and squeeze it in whenever I can. Uh, and I was like, well, wait, how do I draw a circle? And I'm like, wait, I, I spent an entire year learning how to do this and then promptly forgetting it. So I had to go look up how all that stuff worked and remind myself, oh yeah, which one is sine, which one's cosine. Uh, but once you did it, you know, it's pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. And so <laughs> then you do the same thing. Yeah, right. uh, I do the same thing for the background uh, circle. So if you don't, you know, like whatever the background gray is, so I'm gonna point to it with a mouse. This bit right here, the light gray part, I do the same thing there. And then all I do is I use a couple substitute functions to say, hey, take that base SVG text and where it did say points, I want you to start with point 50, 50, which is the center, then have all the points all the way around the circle. So it starts in the center, it goes gunk, 
doop, 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 doop. And then at the end, it goes back to 50-50. That way, it always like creates essentially a slice. Then I say, okay, wherever you had the goal, I want you to go swap out all those points with the, inter with the, um, the x, y coordinates, which is gonna form a complete circle. And then the uh, little goal point at top, that's just the uh, little triangle, and that's how I, I created that. And then when I'm done, uh, we have this little test here to say, hey, uh, by the way, was there an actual amount? If there was no actual amount because there were no sales for that, uh, here's where it determines whether or not you showed nothing or you show a chart that's got you know 0% of the way around the circle. So I check to say, hey, uh, up here tip top for show blanks, way all the way up here, uh, did the user say to show blanks? If they, if they did, uh, then just show a blank. If they didn't, uh, then check to see if there was an actual amount, and based on that, either show or do not show a chart. Then when I'm done, I check to say, hey, are we gonna show something? If we are, go ahead and return that text, which is that big SVG string, and because I set it to an image URL, it draws it. Yeah, it's very nice. And so if you hover over these guys, you can actually see the code being generated. It's complex, but it's actually not too bad. And that's that. Any questions about that before I... Yes? Is there a reason you chose a polyline rather than a fill bar? Because I don't know SVG that well, <laughs> is the reason, yeah. And so I, I basically went online and just, I think I searched W3 and a few other places trying to figure out, wait, how do these, this is another thing that I learned and promptly forgot. But there's probably a better way to do it and that's probably, what was the, uh, the SVG tag? Arc. It's a, arc. Yeah, it's basically a circle that uh, doesn't stretch the whole way around. Yeah, 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 and that's SVG, not D3? That's SVG. Huh, okay. Yeah. The bummer is you can't use D3. You'd like to because it's a lot easier, but uh, no, no D3, just SVG. I made up that other term for the people that were in the room being like, I don't know what that is. I just made it up. It's not a real term. Uh, other questions about this? Okay, fantastic. So I'm well, going to... One, one other thing I would add, <clears throat> Brian's got a lot of variations on this scene. So line chart, uh, what are the other ones you did? You did a line chart? So we've one? got uh, a line chart and we've got a bullet chart currently. And I've got an alternate for a bullet chart that I'm also working and on. And are, are these on the CSG Pro blog? So this one is not yet. The other two are currently in the CSG Pro blog. You can go in on those. I don't just point my finger and say, uh, do this. I actually walk you through building the whole thing from start to end. So if you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff, those are pretty good videos for it. Or you could, have, you could also watch Netflix. Or you watch Netflix. <laughs> and chill. Yeah. Or you can hire Brian to do this for you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, thank thank you, you all very much. Thank you.